Hello, we are going to look at the charts of extroverts and introverts. We're going to look at the charts of three extreme extroverts, people that are highly social, always out and about, and three extreme introverts, just the opposite qualities of you know, staying within more withdrawn. And let's see what these charts actually look like. I conducted a research study that I discuss in, in another video about what is in the charts of extroverts and introverts based on a quantitative research study. It's all numbers and data. Well, now let's actually look at the charts to get a feeling for what they look like. And what we found in that research is that the extroverts have these 11 vibrations. So this is based on vibrational astrology. These things we think are minor aspects are not so minor, according to this theory, that they have a big impact. So we're seeing these vibrations, these Sun, Jupiter, and Mars, Jupiter, 11 vibrations. Well, what the heck does a vibration look like when I'm bringing up the chart? How do I know if I have this? What is, what's happening? Well, let's look at the chart so I can show it to you. And the introverts have these Sun, Saturn, 7 vibrations. And there were some other things we found in the research, like Jupiter is well above the horizon. Uh, now, in that research we did, this quantitative research, the correlation was 0.13, which is actually rather low, but the results are highly statistically significant, which means from a scientific viewpoint, they're very impressive. So this sounds contradictory. If there's only a small relationship, how can it be so impressive? How can something, you know, it sounds like an oxymoron. How could something small be big? <laughs> You're saying there's not much of a correlation, but it's but it's a big difference. What is it big or is it small? Make up, David. Make up your mind. Well, here's let me give you an analogy to to what what I'm talking about. Suppose you look at the height of people in one country, and they average say five foot seven, five feet seven inches tall. And you look at the height of people in another country, and they're a little taller, say five foot inches nine. So five foot seven versus five nine, only two inches. Are the people in this other country really taller? Well, if you compare five people in one country to five people in another country, you don't know because it could be random fluctuation. But in this case, we have 940. So if you took the height of 940 people in one country versus 940 in another country, that's what the statistics tells us is that the people in the other country are actually indeed taller. They are. That's what the statistics lets us know. The probability of that is less than, you know, it's like some very small number. So it, it's there. Okay. So that five foot seven versus five foot nine is not a lot. Or say it was five seven versus five eight. We can all agree it's not a big difference, but it can be a real difference. And that's what we found in the research. So will this scientifically impressive result? but actually only a small, what we call, effect size. Will we see it in the charts and what will it look like? And is this information really useful? We're going to answer all those questions uh, by looking at the charts. Now, to review, the reasons we want to look at these charts, to, number one, get a concrete feeling for what we are interpreting. As I discussed, what does it look like to have these things? And two, by seeing it astrologically, we'll, we'll see the con, maybe we'll see other things. We'll see the context of it. Maybe there's other things going on that, that pop out. And three, we'll get the feeling, as I said, is this really useful? Are we finding something that's practical as well as scientifically impressive? So we're going to take the three most extreme extroverts, three most extreme introverts, and look at them. And this is what we call exploratory research because we just want to see what it looks like. We don't have a lot of assumptions other than we're hoping to see a confirmation that these 11 vibration things show up. And it's qualitative because we're not measuring anything. We're just going to interpret, explore, and get a feeling for it. It's very important. Now, I have a question for you. Is this research that I'm sharing with you different? Is it better or worse or the same as if you 
just look at charts of your friends and family and you say oh here's my friend Joe he has Sagittarius rising he's extroverted is this research more compelling the answer is from a modern uh, viewpoint the answer is yes it's way more compelling way more convincing for two reasons number one we're looking at the charts of extreme people extremely extroverted people tell us more than other people in this kind of study not true for any kind of study I explain this in other other videos number two and even more important there's no cherry picking of the data or what we call selection bias I've got these three most extroverted people I don't get to to change them okay so it's like a game you know I love games I love baseball and chess and you know games so this is a game we play but the fun thing about this game is that you learn something you get something concrete out of it you learn how astrology works so the game is we don't get to pick the data and by doing that we learn more about how astrology works okay so in the serious astrology software we have these scores we can research them and it's in a text file and I can use a little program to sort the scores which are in a column and I saw that the highest scores was 22 and just happened to be the number that you get on this particular survey uh, highest score for this group of 940 people was 22 and there were three people perfect I already decided I wanted to use three and there were three with 22 for the lowest score was a three and there were seven people so I randomly picked three of those seven people as my lowest which is scientifically okay the rules of the game you know it's like baseball three strikes you're out rules of the game you're allowed to select three randomly just you know pick them out that's fine okay so we've got our our people now we want to see what's going on and here's what I found before I show you the charts let me summarize what's in the charts because as we go through them you'll have a framework for understanding what I'm pointing out here's what we found out do these extreme extroverts have the Sun Jupiter in 11 vibration answer yes they do and not only that a third planet always combines with it for these three extreme extroverts so it'll be Sun Jupiter with a third planet this is beautiful this we love this Mwah. this is to die for why do we love this so much because it confirms our VA theory which is that it takes three planets to be to be very powerful so that was interesting uh, that that got confirmed because that was not in the original research we just said Sun Jupiter even though in a, in vibrational astrology we expect it to be three planets it is this helps confirm we're on the right track we're really discovering something but there's also a surprise the surprise is that for these top three people it's 121 vibration because we're looking at a series of 11 11 22 44 we're doubling and we're also squaring 11 times 11 why because our previous research our work with clients tells us that these are the important 11 base vibrations and the 121 shows up conspicuously for all three Wow wasn't ready for that specific result so what do we learn from this well there might there's probably some random fluctuation if I look at the fourth highest score and fifth highest score and extroversion I have a feeling I'm gonna start seeing some 44s and 88s stuff like that so there's probably a little bit of a coincidence there but not completely and this much is very clear square vibrations are extremely important 5 times 5 equals 25 25 is very important 49 which is 7 times 7 these are extremely important vibrations and a way of understanding why they're so important is that they are fractal and astrology is fractal as above so below it's repeating patterns at different levels and when you take the number five and you take five groups of five 
you're doing a kind of a fractal function. And many things in nature are square functions. Gravity, one of the most important things that's holding me to my chair right now <laughs> and holding you down and everything else, gravity, this pervasive important force, it works by a square function, of, a square of the distance and so on, determines the amount of gravitational attraction. So square functions are ubiquitous. They're everywhere. And it's because life is fractal. OK, so anyway, that's one thing we learn from this research. A lot of times the research is confirming, refining, emphasizing. It's emphasizing the importance of that. Now, for these uh, introverts, do they have Sun, Saturn, and seven vibration? Yes, and very beautiful, also with a third planet, confirming the fundamental idea of vibrational astrology, three planet combinations. And what vibrations do we see for all three? Seven or 49? The square function shows up again. So we're getting very interesting results, very compelling results from data that is not cherry picked. OK, so we want to start looking at the charts. We're ready. Let's look at these charts and see what it looks like and what you can bring up when you're seeing coins to get an idea of whether they're extroverted or introverted. Now I'm moving my little picture down here. Why am I moving my picture around? Because I want to cover their birth data, which is over here, right? So I, I don't like being kind of in the middle of the screen, but I want to cover their birth data and I'm going to do it like that just to make it ultra private. We don't have their names on there anyway, but just to be a little extreme about being private about the data here, um, you know, in a public forum. So here, here is the birth chart um, for an extreme extrovert. Would you expect this person to be an extreme extrovert if you're a modern Western astrologer? Virgo rising, would the moon on the ascendant make the person extroverted? There are some planets above the horizon. Um, Jupiter, by the way, is not. It's down here. Anyway, you could look at all kinds of things, essential dignities, etc., whatever you think might work. But let's look at this 11 vibration and specifically the 121. So here's the chart of the, the, that we're looking at. And underneath it, I've already selected 7, 11, and 121 as I was researching this. And when I looked at the 121, I see the Sun and Jupiter connected together right there sun and jupiter and they are making let's see the venus is involved venus is conjunct jupiter and its opposition the sun so there's a very clear sun venus jupiter all three of them are connected together so venus in this case is the third planet now What's interesting about this as well is that it's Sun opposition Jupiter. For those of you who've been studying vibrational astrology or harmonic astrology, what aspect is an opposition in the 121 vibration chart? Let me move my picture down a little bit. It says here 121st harmonic chart. So if you've been studying this a while, you know that the actual aspect in the natal, you multiply the vibration times the aspect. The aspect is an opposition, one half. It's two times 121. So it's actually the 242nd vibration is what this aspect is in the natal chart. Now, if you're new to vibrational astrology, don't let that scare you. All you have to do is look at the basic aspects in the 11 vibration chart and the 121 vibration chart. Let me say that again. If you want to see extroversion tendencies, look at the 11 vibration chart and look at the 121 vibration chart. You got it? It's that simple. Just bring those two up and look at Jupiter. Also Uranus a little bit. Jupiter and Uranus to some extent. And if they are involved in a lot, an aspect pattern, two other planets or strong midpoint structures, it's going to lead to extroversion. Okay, that's the idea. Now, 
this sounds wild, crazy, and bizarre to a lot of astrologers that were going into these crazy vibrations like, oh my god, 121 vibration couldn't possibly be. Well, that's the whole idea of vibrational astrology. There's a whole world going on out there that we did, didn't know about. And some people say, oh, it's so complicated with all these numbers. Is it really? Is this really complicated? Is this more complicated than memorizing, you know, that uh, Mars is, rules Aries, is exalted in Capricorn, and Moon is this, and da, da, da. I mean, there's stuff to learn with any system. It's actually really simple. You don't even have to know what the vibration chart is, how it's made or anything. Just look at the 11 vibration, look at the 121 vibration, look at Jupiter, and see if it's active. Here we see the Sun Jupiter with Venus inclining to extroversion. Okay, that's it. You got it? Let's look at another one. Here's another extrovert. Here's the birth chart. Capricorn rising. We're not very extroverted, we say, at least in the tropical zodiac. <clears throat> Excuse me, in the sidereal zodiac, it would be Sagittarius. But all the planets are above the horizon. All of them, except Mars. Um, so anyway, you can follow it any way you want. What we're saying here is let's look at this 121. It's like 11 on steroids, 11 hyped up, 11 times 11. What is Jupiter doing? It's trying Sun and Neptune. Again, Sun Jupiter in a basic aspect with a third planet, in this case Neptune, all three aspects are within orb. We see the trine is in orb to Neptune because the line is drawn to it. All three aspects are there. And again, this was actually not detected in the original research. The original research was only looking at Sun conjunct Jupiter, not opposition or trine in the 121. So looking at the actual charts is telling us that, oh, your original theory was good. Sun and Jupiter in 121, but actually they can be in any Ptolemaic aspect. It's not just conjunctions. This is huge. So, you know, it's, it's a huge new insight. And it's what we expected according to the theory. I just, you know, when I did that quantitative research, just I just said, well, let's just look at, you know, something really basic. Let's just start here. And we look at the charts, and we're seeing Sun-Jupiter, but not just conjunctions. We see an opposition and a trine, opposition on the first one, trine on the second one, and a third planet. Okay, let's look at the third extrovert. Here's the natal chart. Uh, and you can make out of it what you want. And if you get some more ideas on what creates extroversion, we can add it to the astro signature and improve it. So it doesn't matter whether your ideas come from Hellenistic, Vedic, any tradition. Let's add it in and improve the formula. We're not married to any particular theory. We just want to see what works. This happens to be working, you know. So the more astrologers get involved with different ideas, the better. This is not a competition. It's cooperation. We just want to figure out how this works. How does astrology work? Here's the 121 of our third and last, because I just decided to look at only three. And Sun is conjunct Jupiter with a seven-degree orb. Is there a third planet involved? You know, now I'm not seeing what is the third planet because Pluto is too far from Jupiter. In this case, actually, there isn't a crystal clear three planet configuration so this would be an exception to the rule that there isn't a third planet clearly involved because our strict rule is a 16 degree orb. Pluto to Jupiter would be out of orb. So Sun is conjunct Jupiter. Sun is conjunct Pluto. But Pluto is out of orb to Jupiter. So technically speaking, not all three are within, within orb. We call this a spreading pattern. So there are three planets, but it's not tight. There are three planets, but it's not tight. It's also interesting to look at the midpoint structures to see if something gets reinforced here. And also notice there's a grand trine of Venus, Mars, 
Pluto and Uranus, which is probably adding to it. So overall, we do see the Sun Jupiter again, and this time it's the conjunction. This chart would show, did show up in the research as extroverted. The first two did not. So the first two in our research was restricted to conjunctions. So we're seeing our theory actually works better than the research because we don't want to look at just conjunctions in 121 vibration. So we're getting strong confirmation that all three extreme extroverts have Sun and Jupiter aspected in 121 vibration. Wow. I mean, the consistency is remarkable. And two of the three have a tight three planet pattern and the third one has a weak three planet pattern um, so very very interesting oh you know confirmation of our ideas now let's look at the introverts here are the introverts so would you detect that this person would be highly introverted if we go to the seven vibration <clears throat> excuse me and we look at Sun and Saturn there they are trying Sun and Saturn are trying and Saturn is also weakly trying Uranus Sun and Uranus are conjunct so we have the Sun Saturn uh, so our theory works and there's a third planet weakly involved Mars is also weakly involved it's within orb sextile the Sun out of orb sextile to uh, Saturn. It's almost a sextile sextile trine. The point is this the Sun Saturn is there. It's there. A very strong Sun Saturn trine. We see the thick trine aspect there. Now let's look at 49 and we look at Sun and Saturn. And look at this, Sun and Saturn are also aspected in 49. This can happen. The, the pl two planets can be connected in different vibrations. <clears throat> and Sun is connected to Saturn. And now we have a huge configuration. Look at this enormous thing. Sun, Saturn, Pluto, Neptune. See red lines connecting all of these? and red lines also going from Saturn to Uranus and the moon holy moly we've got you know some of them are thick some are thin but Sun to moon is there weak Sun, moon to Saturn is there weak Saturn to Sun is there for look at this part of it symmetrical this is a sesquiquadrat from Saturn to moon Saturn to Sun sesquiquadrat wow it's gigantic huge configuration including Sun and Saturn now look at the midpoints I click on midpoints and Saturn let me move this picture out of the way here uh, Saturn is at the Sun moon midpoint 12 minute orb 12 minute orb, extremely tight so what we have is a huge configuration in 49 with Sun and Saturn and the moon Saturn at Sun moon midpoint this is huge so strong confirmation when we look at these extreme charts that our theory works and when you look at it in the context of the whole chart it's really there and again what vibration are we looking at 49 again the square function these square functions are very powerful uh, for basic personality traits. Let's look at the next introvert. Here's the seven vibration. Is there a Sun Saturn? There is not. There is no Sun Saturn, which is the planets we're expecting to be introverted. Maybe it'll show up in 49. And what we see in 49 still no Sun Saturn but oh my goodness Wow the Sun and Moon the lights are very tightly conjunct with Mars Uranus opposition Pluto square Neptune six planets I mean look at this thing so what we're learning is it any kind of very powerful 
49 vibration doesn't have to have Saturn but if you get six planets tightly configured it would incline to introversion so this chart is showing that again the square function of 49 is very very powerful and it does not have to be Sun Saturn as long as you get enough planets involved which is what we would think in vibrational astrology. If Saturn's not involved, it's going to take a huge configuration like this to incline you to introversion, right? You got the idea? I mean, it's common sense that, you know, Saturn in seven vibrations introverted. Why? Because Saturn focuses on what's important. You know, Saturn is not actually introverted. It's not, according to vibrational astrology. Saturn just wants to get to the essence of things. And in getting to the essence of things, it narrows you down. And that narrowing process often gives a symptom of being introverted, but not necessarily. You, if you have a strong Saturn, you might be flying all over the world to meet with your colleagues who are doing the same kind of work or have the same interest as you because you really want to get answers and flying all over the world and meeting people you could call extroverted so Saturn is not Saturn does not equal introversion introversion is just a typical symptom of Saturn actually the 7 and 49 quiet down the energy and we make it more withdrawn 7 and 49 are more clearly introverted and they don't require Saturn but Saturn would incline towards it so it makes sense it's really 7 and 49 is the big deal and usually Saturn is part of it but not required okay hope that makes sense let's like look at the third and last extreme introvert is there a Sun Saturn here's the Sun here's Saturn yes they are semi square 45 degrees Saturn is square the moon and moon is sesqui quadrat 135 degrees the Sun there's the Sun moon Saturn in the seven vibration oh my gosh the lights again combining with the moon Sun moon Saturn in seven vibration very simple, very straightforward. All three are with an orb. This is why in vibrational astrology, we end up kind of ironically almost Ptolemaic <laughs> again. <laughs> We're looking at conjunctions, opposition, square, trine, sextile. We also throw in the semi-square and sesqui quadrat. We're using the same kind of aspects modern astrologers use, but we're using them in vibrational charts. That's why it's an easy transition for astrologers, modern Western astrologers, and Vedic astrologers too, because they use these Vargas, which are harmonic charts. But it's an easy transition, because all you're doing is applying those same aspects to these vibrational charts. We have very strict rules about orbs and how you interpret. It's not so much flexibility. We, taught, we have a very clear idea of exactly what things do. But anyway, Sun, Moon, Saturn. There it is. Just as we expected. Probably won't show up in 49 because it's unlikely it would show up in both. Well, let's just look at 49 for fun. And no, not really. There's a Moon, Saturn. There's no, well, what is this pattern? There's a Moon, Saturn, Uranus. Uh, that's kind of disruptive, but not as clearly obvious to a vibrational astrologer. Any vibrational astrologer would look at the Sun, Moon, Saturn in the seventh vibration and go, introverted. It's very clear to us. This is very fundamental. This person needs time alone. They could also have an extroverted side. Doesn't mean that's the only thing going on, but they are clearly have a strong introverted tendency. No doubt about it with um, you know with this kind of configuration uh, both lights with Saturn so conclusions what do we conclude from from this uh, qualitative exploratory research is big confirmation that 
the rules of vibrational astrology really work and when you incorporate all of the ways that we analyze a chart the way what we really do is we look at three planet configurations we look at midpoint structures we see that what we picked up in the research was kind of the peak you know the tip of the iceberg right is that there, it's embedded in a context which tells us more specifically what's going on and uh, the biggest you might say surprise wasn't anticipating this doesn't go against our theory but didn't anticipate it is the power of square vibrations they show up consistently I was it five out of six I think these people all have strong configurations was a five out of six we can review the video anyway all three of the extroverts I think two of the introverts and it, it's strong I mean we don't have to argue about little tiny differences because this is just exploratory research we just want to get the feel of it and the feel the general impression is wow these square vibrations are important and they affect really basic things like your you know your way of being are you more extroverted or introverted so there it is my friends I wanted to show you what the charts actually look like I know this vibrational astrology is a whole new world and we're we kind of you know upset the apple cart here by saying that these things normally considered to be minor are fundamental but that's what it is I think it's exciting a whole new world of information is out there vitally powerful information and the astrology actually works better than we thought because these things are going on that we didn't know about. Well, thank you very much for listening, my friends. God bless. Namaste.